Keir Starmer's chief of staff, Sue Gray, has been hard at work restructuring Labour's top team ahead of the next election with plans for a powerful new executive cabinet to make key decisions. The so-called Gang of Four will include Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves, Angela Rayner <clears throat> and Pat McFadden. But at the weekend, Reeves spelt out that there would be no quick fix for the UK economy. It is clear that the inheritance that a Labour government would have if we do win the next election will be the worst since the uh, Second World War. And I have to be honest that we're not going to be able to turn things around uh, straight away, but we will get to work on all of that. Hang on a minute, they've brought back this guy, Mark Carney, the anti-Brexit former Bank of England governor has been hired by Labour to help unlock billions of pounds in private investment after the party was forced to abandon its £28 billion Green Pledge. So... Sue Gray, Mark Carney, headed two of our impartial institutions. Now they work for Keir Starmer. As much as we mentioned the words deep state, you're labelled a conspiracy theorist, but hang on a minute, editor at the Sun, Calvin McKenzie, former, I should say. Give it time. Uh, Kelvin, thank you very much. I mean, this is pretty bonkers stuff, isn't it? I mean, who else are they going to go for next? Well, so Mark Carney uh, was known as never wrong for long when he was Bank of England governor. Absolutely hopeless, constantly. He was trying to forecast what the markets were like. Markets aren't there to be forecast by, by people like the Bank of England governor. It, it's a very, his main job will not be to attract investors. His main job will be to look at the ways taxes work and work out other ways so that he can, so they can get hold of taxation, so that they can get extra money and invest it in daft ideas. So wait, do you think the appointment of Mark Carney is bad news for anyone with a bit of money in Britain? It, uh, honestly, all appointments by by the Labour hierarchy will be very, very good for the skint and the dim and be shocking for the middle classes. If they think taxes are bad now, wait until you've come up with some crackpot green schemes that need to be funded because it's going to be great for you. And then you will discover what real taxation looks like. We are in for a very, very difficult ride. And Reeves already getting her retaliation in first. This is shocking, this is mm, shocking, mm. this is shocking, right? It, it's going to get a lot, lot worse. I don't think people realise that the moment Labour get in, they will, they will be the most disliked party within half an hour. That is the nature of politics in the world today, thanks to social media. Talking of another Labour figure, right? So mm. the developments in the Angela Rayner council house row, and I think this all feeds in, really, to... What's going on? Raina's former neighbour has branded her an effing liar <laughs> for claiming that she didn't live with her husband before becoming an MP. And the Labour's deputy leader has hit back through her spokesperson. They said, gossip and hearsay does not change the fact that Angela Raina maintained her own home while sharing childcare responsibilities with her husband at his property. She's set out her family circumstances and has taken expert tax and legal advice, which confirms that no capital gains tax was payable on the sale of her home. Raina hasn't done a live interview since the allegations first emerged. Is she avoiding scrutiny? Well, uh, as Guido Fawkes pointed out in a rather good column today, it's been 41 days since she's gone on television or radio, mm. really. Normally, it'd be 41 seconds before you could get her uh, off the television. And the truth about the matter is, when a uh, cabinet minister was in trouble, Tory cabinet minister was in trouble, she led the charge, giving gobloads on it on breakfast television and all the rest of it. She's gone very, very quiet over, over what could be a serious tax issue. It won't, it's not for a lot of money. But the point about the matter is, if, as this neighbour alleges, she hasn't been telling the truth, mm. then, unfortunately, she will be running the country, potentially, in November. And if she's telling whoppers about her own private stuff, mm. what else is she telling whoppers well, about? We've got the deputy leader of the Labour Party embroiled in, which she denies, obviously, this capital gains issue. We've got the leader of the Labour Party who is embroiled in, and still remains embroiled in, the issue with the Speaker and whether or not there are issues to play at the House there. You've got the Shadow Culture Secretary spending 20 grand of taxpayers' cash on Arabic lessons over the course of seven years, and obviously we're yet to see any evidence that she actually has learned a word of it, although I'm sure she has. And you, you look at it all in the round and you think, well, hang on a minute, you know, top, former civil servant, impartial, now working, the chief of staff. Are the Labour Party getting away with things that, frankly, the Tories just can't? Uh, well, unfortunately, every time the Tories do anything, it seems to blow up on them. But is that because of this deep state issue? Well, it's, it's, it's because, actually, the media is always of the left. And therefore, anything that a, anybody of the right does mm. is absolutely considered uh, disgusting and, and variously criminal. 
And so what we must hope is that there are more right leading media as we go forward, whether that's possible under Ofcom, I'm unsure. Now, very finally and very quickly, Calvin, you were the editor of The Sun for over a decade. You covered countless royal stories. Mm. Have you seen a PR disaster the scale of what we're dealing with with the Princess of Wales's latest picture? It, it's true. Because, of, because we're in social media, everything is a conspiracy. I love Kate, mm. the greatest person to be part of the royal family in my lifetime. She is carrying, almost carrying the royal family, almost on her own, right? So I refuse to be massively critical. She tried to do the right thing. It turns out to be wrong. Our problem with it now is this is going to hang around the royal family now, potentially one way and another. Thanks to AI, thanks to conspiracy theorists hanging around in social media, it will be around us for a decade or so. I'm, I, I feel very, very upset. She doesn't deserve this and she definitely doesn't deserve it while she's unwell. Let her alone. She made the smallest of small mistakes and we should just move on from this. Move on. Well, we are. We are moving on. Kelvin, thank you very, very much. Kelvin McKenzie, the former editor at The Sun. Now